Hello and welcome back, and that's right, today's video I'm going to show you how to save yourself a whole bundle of money and instead of buying a network attached storage device to set up a Plex Media server, I'm going to show you how to do it with just a phone. In this video I'm going to be setting up Plex Media server on this phone here. This is a, a Doogie S-Punk. S punk I'll grow up that's right we're using a brand new phone out of the box doogie got in contact and said would you do a review for one of our phones and I was like well I don't review phones but I tell you what I am going to do a video about putting Plex on a phone and I don't really want to use my phone so I'm using this one again it's an incredible beast of a phone it's got a big hardware processor on side of the reason I'm using it for this is when you're running Plex media server you are going to need a somewhat beefier mobile phone to do it. Also, the steps in today's video can be used on um, other Android devices, but it has to be an Android device that has got a USB-C outlet, and it's got to be an Android device that has network connectivity and internet connectivity. If it doesn't have those, and the USB-C you can fudge around, then you're going to have problems. But just make sure you're using a relatively powerful phone, and this one is way overpowered for what we're doing, but it's a great example. And don't really use it as a phone you're going to use for your day-to-day -day services because it will rinse the battery. The next thing you're going to need for this is two applications. Now, M Plex Media Server is not the same as Plex. Plex, when you look it up on your phone, you're going to find this app. If you find this app, this is the client app. This is what you install on the devices that you want to watch the media. But you came to this video almost certainly because you know that you need this. This is the app that you need to run on the system to actually host all of your multimedia there. But the problem is that not only can you not find it in most app centers, but also on top of that, you can't install it on pretty much anything. It's only designed for very specific Android multimedia devices, your Roku's, your whatever. And in this video, we're gonna be circumnavigating that. Next, there's a link in the description to this APK mirror site that lists pretty much Plex Media Server for Android in multiple versions, regularly updated, but I would say the one we are looking for, even though when you go on there, it will be updated as late as 2024, there's April 2024, that you don't wanna go for the latest version yet. Because if you go for the latest version, the latest version will probably not run on your hardware. You can update to it. I would say go back to an older version and then update it from within the application, something we'll touch on later on. I personally recommend going for version 1.14. I'm sure there are later versions that work, but scroll through to about page three, and from there you will find version 1.14. One, uh, 1.141. Um, download that version. Uh, again, nice and simple. You just go to the download option, download that version. You've got it there on your local machine. So we'll come back to that later on. Next, storage. Because if you are running Plex Media Server from your mobile device, Running it from the mobile device is all fair and well, but you're going to have limited storage. Even this phone, although it is powerful enough for what we're doing, and it's got 256 gig of storage, once you start looking at your movies, once you start looking at your TV shows, your box sets, that's going to run out really, really quick. So you need external storage. That's why we're talking about USB Type-C, by the way. Um, now, USB Type-C... Of all of the storage devices you could go for, you could go for a portable external 5TB drive. You could go um, for this. This is the D5 Hybrid. We've talked about this before. It's a two hard drive, three M.2 NVMe storage system. And you can also get that with a five bay version as well. It does need mains power. So this uh, storage system will need additional power to keep it running. If that's going to be a problem, that's where a drive like this that can run from the power of the phone. Now, again, I know what you're thinking. What about when the phone's power runs out? We'll get to that because the next thing we need is an adapter. This is an adapter that will connect into the phone and add our storage. So in this case, I've got a couple of storage drives. Again, both USB Type-C. This will allow us to put all of our media on a drive that we're going to connect with a cable into our phone that we can use Plex Media Server to access. But we need an adapter to connect to this device. The reason being because once we connect that storage drive into our phone, our phone's not receiving power. We might be lucky enough to have one of those um, touchpad powering stations, but the majority of you using old tech won't. So what you need to do is get an adapter like this one that then adds a USB Type-C and Type-A port. That means that not only can you now add the storage drive 
to that adapter, but you can also add power. So you can grab yourself a power cable like this one, attach it into the adapter, and then as you can see, the drive is now charging. So this will allow us to charge our phone simultaneously to it running Plex Media Server with our connected drive there. So for the next segment, I've hopped over to the screen of the Doogie S-Punk phone here to take us through the next range of steps. Now, as you can see there on screen, that is the file manager. And as you can see there at the bottom, that extreme SSD is the external connected drive that I've added inside here. And if we scroll down, we can go in and there is the Plex data that we're gonna be utilizing later on in the video with this. The next thing we need to do is head into the Play Store there. And as mentioned, go ahead and install Plex, the client app. Now, again, I know this seems counterintuitive. Trust me on this. Go ahead and install Plex, the client application. You need to utilize this because we'll be coming back to this later. Make sure you log in and sign in with your relevant Plex account. So if you've not created a Plex account, go ahead and make sure you've added that in. And then the next thing you need to do is that file we downloaded earlier from the Android APK site, make sure that is on the phone. So in my case, I will head back into the main layout. I'll go into my download section, and there is the Plex Media Server application, that version 1.14 that we mentioned earlier on. Go ahead and click that app. It will begin to install that application. You may need to grant permissions in order to allow it to happen in more modern versions of Android, but go ahead and grant it permission. You can remove it later if you choose. As you can see there at the bottom, it is now installed. So if we go back, and you can see there on our list of applications, the bottom right there, the Plex Media Server has now been installed. From here, as I double check that we're still, uh, we're not gonna go ahead with the latest firmware update, we're still screen recording. As we can see, there at the bottom right, if we go into Plex Media Server now, and we click that, as you can see, it's warning you that it's built for an older version of Android and it might not work properly. Again. We could have used a more modern version, but if you use a more modern version, it may recognize that you're not using an Android setup device and block you. But for now, allow it for notifications. And from here, it will then invite you to switch over to the Plex application, that one that you've already installed. Go ahead and click there. And as you can see now, if we go to the multi-screen there, we can see that it's now gonna walk us through the Plex installation, but right now it's doing so utilizing the Plex client app and not the Plex Media Server app. From here, click Next, give it access to media and libraries, allow it to have storage permissions, and then from there, reopen the application. You're gonna to have to grow, go through this process three times. And once that's done, head out and go into the Plex app. From here, go into it and click Next, click Next, click Open, click next three times. I don't know why it always does it three times. And next time you go into the Plex app, it will load into the standard Plex app there, log in, grant it those permissions, and now it will start building your Plex media server um, uh, tool here on that mobile phone. So from this point, it's gonna allow us to go ahead and install Plex on the phone. Let's fast forward to the completion of that creation window. And there you go, it's now finished. As you can see, it believes that we are utilizing an Nvidia Shield here, but don't worry, we can ignore that for now. Go ahead and click finish. It will then go back into the Plex client app. Remember, we're not using the media server app, we're using the client app. From here on the left, click that three bars, then click more, and as you can see down here, now the S-Punk is listed. It's listed as offline, but that's okay for now because we've not booted that app. If we go in to Plex Media Server app and then load it up, that should engage our um, Doogie S Punk phone, enable to allow us to see Plex. As you can see, it's telling us there are network difficulties there. That's because we are accessing it within the inside of this system. Don't worry. From here, we now have to add libraries. All the libraries are set as default libraries here. So if we go into movies, for example, what we're gonna to need to do is start assigning those libraries. Now, it's recommended for this next step that trying to do it here is going to be difficult. What you need to do now is head over to the desktop PC that we're using earlier in order to walk you through the next step. 
So now we've made our way back onto the desktop here, what we need to do is head over to Plex.tv. Make sure you're logged in with the same Plex account that you assigned onto the Plex client app on the phone. And from there, go to the top right option, select Open Plex. What it will do is then state that the version of Plex that's running on that particular mobile installation, in this case, as you can see, the S-Punk is out of date and needs to be updated there. So go into Open Server directly, and that will allow us to start configuring this particular Plex appliance in our Plex uh, multimedia setup there. This will allow us to make our way in, and then from here, we can start configuring it. There's the name, so if you want to rename it, go for it if you choose. From there, start adding those libraries. So for this case, for example, we've got home videos. So home videos, in my case, I might go ahead and add some new folders. So in my case, I would go into, so let's go movies instead. We'll go for movies, there it is there. Select Add Folder. You can see there is the native folder that's inside. Select Browse Media Folder. And then from there, find the folder that you want to choose to use. Once you've granted access to those directories that are on the external storage drive of your choice, you may have to go into the permissions of your system in order to find them. Make sure they're all attached appropriately, and then from there, click Next, just like you would for any Plex installation. And now, as you can see here, it is now starting to go through the libraries on the system uh, or the Plex Media Server installation on that phone in order to add our libraries. Now that is going to take time for indexing there as it starts adding each of those directories one by one there. So let's fast forward to the completion of that indexing. While it does that indexing, actually, I think it's worth touching on just a few things before we tail in this video. Number one, if you do want to go into the whole transcoding thing, bear in mind your phone is going to be a much more miniaturized version than most big servers that you'd use for Plex. But nonetheless, integrated graphics will allow um, for transcoding, even though most mobiles run on ARM processors. So to put it into perspective, you do have some options for hardware acceleration. You will need to use a Plex Pass account to use hardware transcoding. But that's really not a discussion to have on the mobile device. Personally, I wouldn't recommend this setup if you're going to be utilizing any kind of live transcoding. I would try to stick to playing things native. The same thing goes with enabling DLNA over UPnP, kind of nice, easy multimedia playback. And this does allow you, rather than going for a big expensive NAS to utilize previously unused mobile devices and tech that's just gone out of warranty that you don't really want to waste and at the same time use old storage arrays and old JBOD DAS and RAID storage that's actually quite affordable these days. Now another thing to do while this is going through there in the background is to discuss those updates. If you do want to update it keep in mind you are running Plex in an unsupported fashion and therefore there is the potential that running some updates may knacker your whole setup. Now, within Plex, you can back up your configuration. There's lots of options with regards to um, backing up some of the details on your system to an online account, a lot of the directories, backing up your metadata and more. But also on top of that, just know that when you're updating, it's going to be unstable sometimes. So what you can do if you choose to update, I wouldn't update from 1.14, for example, up to the latest, greatest, painful um, 1.21 version. I think there'll be too much change, and I do think it might render, at best, your Plex Media installation not working, and at worst, massively unstable or possibly even brick your device when you're trying to use it and reprofile the device with those provisions uh, permissions i know that's a bit over the top but it's not impossible i would recommend going uh, say for example going into version 1.14 into 1.15 into 1.16 and gradually and granularly update into the versions of plex and do that by downloading the latest version onto your mobile phone and then from there stick it on the phone and install it and it will just patch and update the existing plex media server installation but just keep in mind remember that the plex client is still going to be overwatching there so that might trigger instabilities later and the last thing just before we head back into plex again I feel like I've done Doogie disjustice here. They did send the phone for free. It is going to run Plex very, very well. It's a powerful phone. It's got a great battery on it. I'm not going to say the camera's out of this world, realistically, but as a Plex media server, I think it's going to do a great job. I know a lot of you watching this are going to be repurposing old tech, but thanks again for Doogie for supplying the phone. Even if I think the name of this phone is a bit sus, um... Uh, thanks for supplying it to help me make today's video. Again, thanks to them. But let's head back into Plex for the completion of that indexing.
So slowly but surely, as you can see there, episodes that are on the external drive are now being added. And then over time, it's going to be scraping some of the images there. Alongside that, it's also going to be scraping a lot of the thumbnails, the cast, and all that kind of stuff that people like to use. But this is going to take time. You are using a much more scaled down system, and you are using local single attach storage, storage there. So it's not going to be as immediately responsive there, at least in terms of the indexing, as you might expect from a NAS, like we've talked about in the past. But going ahead and trying to play a file here, and again, of course, this is going to be over the local area network there, season one of Father Ted, let's go ahead, we're going to have to be careful because of the YouTube copyright bots, but again, playback there, nice and simple, we might have to mute this, why not, but let's have a little look, we've got it, it's being converted there in the background, it's being converted down. And I'm going to mute that and stop that before the YouTube bots go nuts. But at least you can see there that it was playing it back. And I would say overall, it's worked. This isn't going to be the most ideal setup for everyone. I'm not going to say that it is. But I will say if you are looking to have a Plex Media server on a budget, this might well serve for you. Now, I'm probably going to write an article about this linked in the description of NAS Compares that will have all of the links to everything. But I, of course, will put links to all of the resources that I've used in today's video and a few other recommended storage options and maybe some other adapters. I didn't really talk about using docking stations. If you're going to use a docking station, this is a Ugreen USB-C docking station. It means it's powered by USB, so you're not going to need an external um, power outlet there, but it also allows you to have a lot more HDMI output, um, not HDMI, USB outputs, but you've also got HDMI for local output as well of the mobile device, so if you choose, do you want a bigger screen to configure, you've got that option, and again, thank you so much again to Doogie for supplying the phone for today's video, and allowing us to do this installation today, there'll be a link to them in the description too, but thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.